Spencer, what's up, baby? Not much. What's up? Yeah, so guys, just a little backstory. I got that wrong four fucking times already. That's why she didn't sound as excited. I'm live on Twitch, but also trying to record her podcast, and I <gasps> fucked that up four times. That simple little thing that you just seen. Anyways, Lindsay Spencer is a uh, cage aggression fighter. She just came off her second fight, second win. Brutal knockout, 15 seconds with a... It was a straight right or it was an overhand right? It looked like a straight right to me in the video. Yeah, it was pretty straight. I dropped a little bit. I did a little overhand, but it was pretty straight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I felt it and I was watching the video. Anyways, uh, introduce yourself and give a little bit of background on what led you to here and and fighting and uh how you got so jacked guys she's <laughs> she's strongest chick in her division like she's she's strong anyways go ahead uh so been doing sports my whole life started when i was young um did track and field through college and then did some olympic lifting and then some power lifting and ended up moving to the midwest and working as a massage therapist and that's where i met uh, my coaches that I have now and uh, we're just talking and they invited me to the grappling and jujitsu classes they teach and it's something I've always wanted to learn but never done because I was always tied up in other sports and they got me in there and I fell in love with it okay what'd you run what did you do in track and field like what what, what races did you run uh, I was actually a thrower so I did discus shot hammer Okay, that explains a little bit. That straight right. <laughs> yep. Any, anyways, uh, how, how did you feel like when when you f had your first fight? How confident did you feel? I know you spar and you train and you probably do drills, ground drills and stuff like that. But once that cage, once that cage shut for the first time and it was just you and somebody that wanted to take your head off, kind of tell us what that's like because most people don't know what that's like. And it's insane. Like I've competed on some pretty big platforms and I thought I knew what an adrenaline adrenaline dump was. And it's not even close to the same. Like, um, I was doing pretty good, feeling good. Um, a little bit jittery on the walkout, um, bounce around a little bit in the cage and I was fine. Like kept my head until we started exchanging. And as soon as we started exchanging, it was like, switch flipped and my entire body was on fire the adrenaline hit me and it was like felt like i had lactic acid in every muscle group in my body so it felt like i was moving slow and punching through sludge i couldn't think clearly like all of my training went out the window um it was very painful <laughs> and uh, not very much fun to be honest painful at the moment or painful the next day the moment like it legit felt like my body was on fire. Oh, not from um, and being, I was in not from being hit, but just because of the adrenaline. Yeah, I was like, I didn't really feel much of what was going on as far as taking hits and stuff like that. It was mostly just that adrenaline messed me up. It was uh, pretty awful. So I was fighting with that the entire fight. We went all three rounds and it went to decision. And I felt like hell the entire fight. It was like I had no conditioning, um, but I was in decent shape. You know, I, I shouldn't have felt that way. But the, everyone warned me the adrenaline was going to do that. Your first fight, it happens to pretty much everybody. And um, it got me good. Mm, well, you handled it pretty well. So uh, a little bit of backstory. This is how I, I found Lindsay Spencer. I was just watching fights, you know, on Facebook. And not necessarily cage fights. I was watching all kinds of fights. And uh, I seen this video of, uh, I seen a video on the right of you. And I seen this fight promotion that I haven't heard of before. Uh, cage aggressions. And it didn't look like a small promotion. It looked very professional. And Anyways, I watched her fight, her first fight. And this is what made me send a message to her. We had a mutual friend or something. It was quite awesome it was very easy to get a hold of her but she fought through some adversity in her first fight you could tell that something was going on i didn't know it was your first fight but mm -hmm. it, it, it seemed anyways she fought a girl that was good on the ground 
and was put in some pretty bad positions and the girl just couldn't do anything with her. Like everything that girl tried to do, she failed in. There was a couple of moments or situations that you were in that I probably would have tapped, but you didn't. And uh, when she finally stood up, she she beat the hell out of her and I was like, <laughs> I was I was extremely impressed with some of the uh, some of the strikes you landed on her after going through that. I figured that your arms were burnt out after being in that situation. Man, on the gr- yeah, you talk yeah, about it. You know more than I do out. about it. I just watched the video one time. Go ahead. And t- <laughs> tell us about that. F- about like the times you were on the ground with her. Was it an arm bar she was working you on, or I can't remember what she had. You yeah. On. So um, I can't remember. Like my fights are kind of a blur just because the adrenaline. But we got on the ground somehow, and um, she took my back, and then she did get me in an arm bar, but. I didn't feel any pressure. Like she didn't quite have the angle. And so honestly, I used it as a breather. I was like dying. So took a couple deep breaths and then was able to flip out of that and, uh, get into side control, I think. And, um, basically the whole second round was on the ground. And then first round and third rounds were more on the feet. Um, she's, she had a lot more experience. I believe that was her eighth fight. And, uh, she had some decent jujitsu. And so she won the second round for sure. I just wasn't, uh, <laughs> like I said, I wasn't able to do much. I was kind of in survival mode that whole fight. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like when I, when I, when I was watching the fight and I seen you and I was like, I, it was like, this girl's going to kill this other girl. Cause guy, the other, the other girl just looks like an average per the average woman that you would see she just had some pretty good ground skills like her ground game is pretty tight and i thought you were gonna i thought you were gonna tap twice i thought i was like oh no oh no what's going on here and what was so impressive is i was worried that you were gonna tap and then you came out and pretty much destroyed her and then i was like you know what i'm gonna look up lindsey spencer because that's what i do I look people up, I send them messages, and I try to bring them on so you guys can can meet them. And then uh, I didn't get to see the second fight until after we had talked and you sent me the video. And that just kind of confirmed everything that was in my head, that you were an absolute fucking savage. Jesus Christ. If you guys want to see the video, if you guys want to see her first fight, you can probably YouTube it, Cage Aggressions, Lindsey Spencer. The second fight... Um, I, I'll tell you what, the second fight, I'll buy it tonight and I'll post it in the Discord for you guys to watch. Can I do that? If I buy it, can I post it for a couple of people to see in a private server? Or is that, uh, probably not, huh? I, I don't know, actually. You know what? We, we won't do that. $10 if you want to see the fight, guys. I don't want to take money from this smaller promotion. That's how they make their money. Anyways. It's so, off. uh. You have a next fight planned? Uh, possibly one in the works, but not hundred percent sure yet. Do you Happen know? Just do you know? A matter of when? Is it like a fight, or you actually have your eyes on one person? Like there's a person that's potentially going to be your fight? Um, no, not yet. It's it's kind of hard to find other female fighters in the area, so we might have to do a little digging and. Uh, maybe bring somebody in or I might have to travel or that's what I was just going to ask if you um, ever thought about traveling to fight in one of these other promotions are you in a contract with this promotion right now no that's good so you're oh, so that's something that'll probably happen at some point uh, with cage aggression or with another promotion uh, as far as traveling I'll probably end up traveling um, I am not in a contract with anybody that's good don't be right now until it's right. You know what I mean? Um, some of these yeah. promotions, some of these promotions, uh, they'll tie you up in a, in a contract for so long and they ruin people's careers. I'm not saying your promotion, you know, I've known some fighters that got tied up in smaller promotions and they couldn't fight anywhere else. And they wound up losing their chin or getting an injury before they are out of the contract with them. But anyway, yeah, that sucks. So do you, uh, you said that you do or you don't know the name of your potential next fight? I don't. 
but you can't eat. like how much uh are you going to be able to do a camp before the fight or is it going to be another short notice thing yeah I, we should have time um like i said i'm not even for sure on a date yet there's no another one's going to happen we just have to wait to get all the details and stuff and i can't wait is there any way to watch it live like if i wanted to buy the fight yeah they actually did uh mm -hmm, they did it on pay-per-view it's a thing now with caged aggression so that's sweet cool so you're you're with a, yeah. you're with a pretty good promotion that's about to be a thing i mean it's already a thing like guys yeah. if you go watch any cage aggression fights they have a really good camera crew a really nice cage a really nice setup it's like you're watching it's it's they're they're a thing now they really are a thing now i i never heard of them but I think, that, I think that i noticed cage aggression when we were all supposed to notice them you know it was it was pretty pretty good production i was impressed they do a really good job and uh he's really trying to up the ante uh, mike goodwin is the owner of the promotion and he's great to work with and uh he puts on a really good show. Like I was impressed when I first saw one of his shows. I saw some of the other ones before, way before I ever got into fighting myself. And uh, which probably didn't some of them were a little sketchy. Which probably didn't help your nerves at all, huh? Well, that, that was back before. Like I never had any intention of fighting, honestly. Like that was a while ago and before I even started training. And um, it was a whole new world to me. So it was, <laughs> it didn't, uh, in those shows, I was like, yeah, this is definitely not for me. Mm, mm, mm. So what other promotions have you fought with? Promotions that we would know? Or just, uh, I've just done caged aggression for those oh, cool. two fights. You, you got hooked up with, man, well, you heard my fight story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Little little backstory on me, guys. Uh, I wrestled in high school. Got out of high school and did a little jujitsu with some friends, and uh, fought a few fights or whatever. But my first fight was in a backyard, and the referee was carrying a forty ounce beer in his hand, and they waved me over. Hey, come this way. Are you ready? I didn't get to take off my glasses, my shirt, or anything. It's like where I stepped into the area where we're we gonna fight. I had a guy on top of me instantly. I don't even know if that place had a promotion. I just know that it was a $500 fight, and I didn't give a fuck. But uh, what we're saying is there's some really sketchy-ass promotions out there that fight fighters with concussions and shit, and I'm just... I'm glad you didn't have to go through all that. Your first fight went in a backyard. <laughs> yeah, for real. I know, I feel like I got lucky. Like, I just landed in the right spot with the right people, honestly. Like, my coaches are phenomenal, and Cage Digression is local here. And so, I kind of got spoiled. Hey, you don't look like you're spoiled. You look like you're working your ass off. Because <laughs> the, fir the first fight, the first fight, I didn't know it was your first fight, but it makes sense that it's your, it was your first fight now. Um, I still saw skills and talent there, and, and just the brutalness of your, your hands. They... Your hands are nice. They, they, when you land, when, when, when they land, you could see the other girl's face like, oh, I'm in trouble. You, <laughs> you saw the look I was talking about, right? When you finally hit her with a hard hit uh, punch, the look on her face. I don't know if you were paying attention, but I was. Uh, and then in your second fight, it was like, you, you, like, you had it in your head that, you were trying to kill her right off the get go, and you didn't want to give her a chance to do anything. Like you, you which is put, funny. You put your head down. You bit your you bit your mouth guard down, and just drove forward and just. Guys, go watch it. Ten dollars cage aggression. The punch is worth ten dollars. Um, trust me. <laughs> it's funny because like that was not the plan. That's not what I was. I wasn't thinking in my head like I'm gonna knock her out. The plan was to make it last the first round and kind of pick her apart. And um, I just you know I got jittery and stupid, and one of her rights landed, and so I was like, all right, she's got to pay for that. And so when she she threw a kick and dropped her hands, and I just went in, and mm. I was actually surprised when she fell. And it was over really fast. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited for the next fight. Like I watch yeah. UFC fights and stuff like that, but I'm I'd be happy to play pay for this fight. I'm super excited about it, and I hope 
So, do you think that you'll get a 90-day camp in for this next fight? Do they give the fighters um, that much that much notice? Or are you just always training and always ready, and that's how, how you keep yourself? Yeah. Ready. Yeah, we're just always training and always ready. And so, like, if it's a, a shorter camp, it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, it'll be fine. And if it's not the right fight for me, then my coaches aren't going to let me do it. So That's smart. That's smart. Let you grow slowly or at your own pace. How tall are you? I'm 5'6". Five, 5'6", six. Five, six, so you're fighting at 135? No, the first fight was 45, and the second fight was 55. Um, is What, what uh, weight class do you feel the healthiest in? Like, how bad are your weight cuts? They're pretty bad? Or are you just ready to go? No, I typically walk around, yeah, I walk around at about 155, 152 to 155, um, even up to, like, 57 sometimes. Um, so that's kind of where I'm more comfortable, but the cut to 45 wasn't terrible, honestly. 35 think? would be an issue. What I'm saying is you're 5'6", and you're... Walking around at 155 ish, so you have to cut 10 pounds for a 145 pound fight. But, you know, guys like Conor McGregor fight at 145, tall, long. Just curious if if you would ever even consider one, like I wouldn't say right now, but if you start fighting for this promotion takes off or you start fighting for a bigger promotion or something, would you ever consider dropping down to 135? My coaches have talked about it um, again down the road. It would be a thing, but, um, it, uh, it would take a lot of work, um, kind of restructuring my body. I carry a lot of muscle mass. And so there's not a, a ton to cut from like, and it's, it's possible and we can make it happen. But, um, like I can't imagine being smaller than 145. So my coaches say, we can do it and it'll probably happen. <laughs> it makes me nervous. No, but. I, I guarantee. Well, it's, I don't think it's, it's going to suck. The weight cuts always suck no matter what it is, mm -hmm. but like it's something you do over a course of like a, a long time. You change your diet, you change your, you know, the way you're doing right now, your strength and conditioning, you hit weights a lot. You're trying to put on yeah. muscle mass or are you just trying to maintain? No, like, um, we try to, like I build muscle really easily. So we're trying to keep me, me smaller and more efficient. Um, it just, it's something that kind of happens naturally for me. And so we're like trying to not let that happen. So they're trying to maintain you where you're at. So you don't go up in weight class. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How much, how, how's your cardio? Do you gas out in the first round and the second round you struggle in? No, it's, uh, cardio is pretty decent. It's been a really, really painful, uh, road to get me there. Cause I did, I had no cardio when I started, but, uh, it's pretty decent now. Like when we're doing rounds and stuff, usually I start feeling my best, uh, later on in like five, six rounds in stuff like that. If we're going like full bore, obviously that's a little different story, but I'm pretty decent. It, I, I wish I could have done this off off screen, but uh, guys, that's that's Lindsay Spencer. That's who you're talking about. When she says she's she's got a lot of muscle, she does. She's jacked. She's ripped, and she's <laughs> absolutely fucking terrifying. Jesus, <laughs> you can kick everybody's ass in my chat right now, including me. That's <laughs> that's an absolute. But uh, <laughs> people, folks are laughing in the chat. Anyways, uh, what are your other hobbies? You got any other things you do, or are you pretty much work and and training take up all your time? That takes up a lot of time. Um, we really like to travel. Um, I like reading. I like cooking. I'm kind of big into nutrition along with the training stuff but um like experimenting with recipes and like i'm i'm a big foodie i love junk food and sweets and i 
typically don't let myself have them. And so I like to take recipes and tweak them so that they're healthier and I can eat them and they're not as good as the originals, but sometimes they're, they turn out pretty damn good. Um, um, yeah. My wife, we have a dog, so we like to go hiking with him. My wife makes the, uh, makes a keto, a keto cake. And it, it ta- I, I know what you're saying. Mm. When you're trying to make something sweet that's healthy for you, it, it tastes fucking weird. Definitely. Yeah. It takes some getting used to, uh, your taste buds change a little bit, but are you, it works. I mean, it helps. Are you into are you into shooting or firearms or anything? Do you ever go to the range and blow off steam? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I um, haven't been in way too long. It's it's an all tr- training and work, so I got to get out there. She's an MMA fighter, guys. She's a uh, hot and she shoots guns. <laughs> wow. So like what, the what, trifecta, what, right? What what do you what do you what do you shoot? Like you you shoot nine millimeter pistol, AR fifteens. Like what's your favorite what's your favorite firearm to shoot? Um, I love my Glock nine millimeter. Um, I just I'm I'm starting just starting to an AR. I got to learn how to do that. So I'm still kind of new to all of that stuff. But yeah, my Glock is you shoot a. a baby. Glock. A Glock 19 or a Glock 17 or the 43 or 46? 19. 19. 19. Why did I say 46? That's not a 9 millimeter. I'm just fucking up everything <laughs> tonight, guys. Jesus. That's what uh, my everyday carry is a Glock 19 with the TLR light on it. It's it's also my baby. But I also have a, a, a Glock 17, which is my service weapon, which is what I use on my loadout and kit. I love them. You got anything oh, done to it? Any trigger work, or is it just all OEM stock? Um, yeah, I had some work done. Um, couldn't tell you what exactly was changed on it. <laughs> I don't know that much about it, but it it feels a lot better now that I have it back. So you probably got some trigger work done. Your disconnect. Re- re- uh, re- yeah, I, I know that. I did some work on the trigger and. Um, playing on the grip stuff like that i can't wait to see it one day my my clocks are just <laughs> stock i can't afford well i don't think that i'd want to do anything to them i carry every day so i don't want a fancy trigger you know a light pull when i pull my trigger i want to yeah. it. you know i have appendix carry you know where that is yeah that's where my my stuff is so a light trigger is just sketchy mm-hmm. for the way that i carry <laughs> makes sense so no other hobbies, just fighting, working, what you've already told us, and shooting every once in a while. Yeah, um, I'm a bit of a nerd, so I do like reading, um, hiking, like hiking and camping. Um, I'm from Utah and right next to the Rockies, and so like the mountains are my happy place. So any time that we can get out away to the mountains, um, that's like the best. Hunting? Any hunting? Never been hunting. That's on my to-do list. Oh man, you're finally went fishing a few times. So I'm telling you, like when you when you so hunting the way that I hunt. By the time you actually eat the meat, it's the best thing in the world. Like for me, I have to hike. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta go. I hunt public land, so I have to travel further than any other people would tra- travel to guarantee that I'm gonna get a deer, and that means like hiking 15 miles out into the woods, setting up camp, waking up the next day, killing a 150, 200 pound deer and stuffing it in a backpack after Mm -hmm. I harvest it and then having to carry it 15 miles out. And when you've cooked that, it's probably kind of like that win you got, all that hard work you put in and you win the fight. What does that feel like? What does that feel like to have your, your, your adrenaline, you're on fire because of your adrenaline and then 15 seconds later, the fight is over and you just completely devastated somebody with literally four times the experience that you have. What's that um, feeling like? Uh, well, the first time, um, <laughs> I was just happy it was over, honestly. And it, it felt close to me. Like I wasn't sure that I was going to win that one. And so that was um, a relief and I was really happy about that. The second one, uh, I, it definitely felt good. It really felt good. Um, 
it was a bit of a shock though to have it over so soon. I I didn't expect that. Wasn't trying for it. So it was like a shock, but yeah, it definitely felt good. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see the uh cage aggression version of the video. So guys, she sent me a video. Um somebody recorded it with a with a cell phone. I couldn't even tell if it was the whole fight. I didn't even know it was the whole fight. I just saw her straight right and this I just saw her flatline this chick. <laughs> And uh, when I messaged her to talk about it, I had thought that they started recording late and they didn't. She just walked out to the center of the cage. Like she put the pressure on her. Um, I wouldn't, what do you think? Two feet, three feet, you had her from the cage? Like she, you pushed her out of the center of the cage when you threw that right for sure. So was that the only punch that you had landed? Yeah. Was that the only punch that you had landed? Uh it was hard to see in the video. Oh, I, I landed a couple, yeah. Um, I, I think I landed a couple others. Um, and then a couple inside leg kicks. But yeah, it didn't last long. Right on. How much, uh, how much time do you spend on um, training on the ground, like ground game? A lot. Um, Especially after the first fight? Three to four days a week. Yeah, well, so that's the funny thing is like I started with grappling. Like that was how I started training. And like I said, I had no intentions of fighting at all for the first while. And so that's where I have more experience. I just, and I couldn't move. I've never experienced anything like that adrenaline. And I'm, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Liz. I mean, she was moving well and she knew what she was doing. She has good ground game, but um I was really disappointed with that fight because I, I did not showcase my skill level at that time at all. So, um, <laughs> ironically, ground game is actually where I'm the most comfortable, and neither of my fights have showcased that. So three, to f you said four, four times a week you, you work ground? And then the rest you do what? String yeah. uh, strength and four. conditioning and some striking? How much sparring do you do? Um. It was probably the same three to four days a week and then conditioning. Um, sometimes I'm doing two a days. So sometimes it changes up a little bit, but they're all conditionings pretty much every day. And then three to four wait, three to four days on both stand up and ground. Mm. So when you spar, is it like in the cage and you got somebody coming at you? It's real. Like you're, you guys are fighting 75%, 50%. Yeah, we don't go super hard. We don't have a cage to train in. Um, but it's like, it's typically with my coaches that I'm sparring. And so they're, I mean, they put the hurt on me, but obviously they're holding back. They're, they're a lot bigger and stronger and know what they're doing. Um, so I've, I've, uh, I've been dropped several times by some nasty liver shots. I've been hit really hard. I've been kicked till, you know, kicked, like hobbling away, stuff like that. Well, but it's, um, they, they, it's not like they're just beating the hell out of me. Like they're conditioning me and working me up to be able to take those shots. Yeah, the body shots I wouldn't be worried about. But like, well, I guess it works out. Some fighters spar all the fucking time, full blast. And then some don't. People are successful in both things. I think sparring too much, probably not good for the brain. Definitely could sh yeah. shorten a fighter's career, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I don't think you need to take full-blown shots all the time. Like, I don't think that's healthy. I'm I'm in the health profession, and so I want to stay, stay healthy for as long as possible. Um, and sometimes you're constantly in survival mode. You're not always learning. Like it's important to learn how to survive, but sometimes those lower level days, um, are when things really click because you're not worried about dying. You know? <laughs> I don't think you need to worry too much. I just, I'm, so this is, this is the reason why I'm asking these things. I'm excited for you. I want to see, Thank you. I want to see you do awesome things. And I'm, I'm just glad you're with some good people. Hopefully they can find you, uh, find you a, a chick that's just slightly better than you to spar with so that you can uh, knock those nerves off. I think by your third fight, it probably won't be as bad. 
you got to be going into the third fight with a little bit more confidence coming off of two wins. I would. I would definitely. Yeah, I feel like um, I definitely handled the nerves and everything much better the second time around. So um, third fight, I'm hoping that I'm better able to kind of keep my head in the in the cage. Like the first two, like conscious thought kind of turns off. It all becomes reaction and, and instinct. And so I, I want to get good at being in the cage and staying fully present and fully aware of what's going on and being able to be strategic and um, skillful with what I'm doing. How was it, um, how was it taking directions from your coach the first time? Were you just in survival mode, couldn't hear the coach? Um, mm -hmm. or that's how it was the first fight. Like you went in there and your coach disappeared. Yeah, pretty much. I, I heard a, him yell a couple of things like throughout the, the whole fight. Um, and that was about it. Besides that, it was just like that narrow focus. It was just me and her. And, uh, I couldn't really hear anything or see much else of what was going on. Man, I, 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 I bet there's a bunch of fighters that don't even listen to their coaches. I mean, I see it all the time, coaches and like the UFC calling out stuff. You know, now because of the COVID-19 thing, when you watch UFC fight now, there's no fans. So you hear every strike, you see, you hear right. everything the coaches are saying. And I see a lot of fighters that aren't listening to their coaches. And then some fighters that are listening to everything they say. But I, I just couldn't imagine with somebody trying to tear yeah. my head off, me being able to focus on a coach and the fight. That's the reason why I ask. But I imagine, yeah, I imagine but, you'll get there. You'll be able to do both eventually, especially once you get rid of yeah, the that's, nerves. Yeah, uh, that's where I want to get is just having that state of mind where I'm tuned in to, to my coach and everything that's happening. It's such a, like a primal thing. Like you said, you get locked in a cage with someone that wants to beat your ass and there is not a feeling in the world like it. No, but I mean, uh, a lion in a cage is fine, but once you crawl into that cage with that lion, it's just always, you know what I mean? So, I mean, fear yeah. can, I, I think fear is a benefit in a fight. A little bit of fear, but the ability to be able to calm your mind and listen to your coach probably helps a little bit. Man, I, I'm super, super duper stoked and can't wait to see your next fight. Can't wait. It's like your first fight, you're like, ah, she can work through adversity. She can handle herself. Like... You were in trouble in that fight a couple times, and it didn't really seem to, fa from what I could see, phase your your focus on on bettering your position and getting to a point to where you could show some offense. Now, your second fight was just like, oh, th this is who Lindsay Spencer is. She tears your head off with one punch. I wish I could show him that video. I just don't know if cage aggression would be okay with that. So we probably shouldn't. Damn it. You need to find out what the rules are. <laughs> Next time we do this, maybe maybe they'd be happy about putting their promotion out there. Maybe. Man. Yeah, I'll have to find out. Yeah, my there's there's folks in my chat right now asking me to show it here and show it there. I can't show it. I can't show it till I have permission. <laughs> I don't want to get my guest in trouble with one of her bosses. So what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a massage therapist in my own little company. And, um, so that's another reason I, I wasn't really planning on fighting cause I, the, it was like, I'm a healer by trade technically. And so like thinking about purposely hurting somebody, it took me a long time to wrap my head around that one. Yeah. I can see why you think that, you know, people come in and they're like, Hey, I need you to fix me. And you're all fucked up. And <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you own your own business? Just uh, independent, work by myself. Um, I have pretty awesome clientele. I work out of the gym that I train out of, so I basically live there. Um, I've uh, taken naps there. I work, and then I go train, and then I go back upstairs to work. And So it's a really good setup, actually. 
See, this is the beginning of a really, really good story of a fighter that lived at the gym she trained at. <laughs> this is like, this is like a, a, a Rocky, the movie Rocky, if the Rocky was homeless. I realize you're not homeless, but that would be even be a better story if you were. It seems to me that you live in a nice little home. Uh, so uh, you, you live in Illinois, you said? Uh, Iowa. Iowa. Who the hell told me they lived in Illinois? Feel like a complete dumbass now. i don't know yeah uh, well they announced it wrong in my fight too i used to live in illinois um okay that's now i'm in that's iowa so. maybe you didn't tell me maybe i read it you live in iowa right on maybe. you got to get out in the woods and kill some dinner you got to try that mm, I, I know i always got some well hunting is a big thing here so that would be fun you talk about adrenaline the first time i killed an animal with a bow First off, you're shaking as you're drawing it back because you're like 25 feet from the thing. It, it's, a, it's a complete different animal. Like, you have to become an animal to get that close to an animal. And I don't know if my adrenaline was where yours was at in a fight because I had a bow and this thing was just eating grass. But I was shaking as I pulled the bow out and thunk, released it. And uh, it was a pretty good hit. I found it like probably... 20 yards away or whatever but even after i walked up to the ammo i was shaking you know you got you're shaking you're going through emotions because you just took a life you're me every time i kill an animal i feel bad but that's going on i'm shaking my adrenaline's pumping and then i walk up to this thing and uh i know this sounds crazy guys it's quite funny but if you're unsure if an animal's alive or not what i do is i poke it in the eye and uh <laughs> you're got all these emotions going on now you're poking an animal in the eye don't do that that's just what i do <laughs> some people just walk up and pull the arrow out i don't i don't do that but hey i'm telling you especially you being a fighter game meat is is way higher in protein and Lunar. the animals that you're killing are running from predators and shit so you're basically putting a a fighter in you it's it's yeah i, I stand by game meat I stand by it. I feel so much better after eating game meat, especially elk. For sure. Well, what, what, uh, kind um, of, what kind of game meat do you have out there? Uh, I think it's just whitetail mostly. Mm, whitetail is good shit. There's, there's not a lot out here. Yeah. Um, back home, my brother-in-law is a big hunter and his whole family. So I he's made like elk and um, we have muleys out there. I think I've had moose before, maybe. Um, I smoked like goose and um, pine hen. It's like a mountain pheasant kind of. Um, so yeah, I'm I, I I'm a fan. You eat a lot of game meat then, family dinners and stuff. I wish uh, I used to. I'm telling you, it'd help you. <laughs> it definitely stuff. help you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, cleaner, leaner healthier all around i gotta get in on that i got i got some elk once we don't have elk here in texas but uh a buddy of mine gave me some elk and how i felt after i ate it was like it's just a completely different feeling when you eat wild game in my opinion i don't know if anybody else would feel anything different but i eat you know same shit everybody eats steaks from the grocery store chicken and all that but there's just something about game meat and especially when you harvest the animal you got it you got to make your facebook profile a little bit more badass wins in the cage and and 12 peak 12 peak uh 12 point bucks that'd be cool your I it. it's your Instagram on my list. would be lit as fuck <laughs> i bet except for all the vegans getting mad at you that you that you killed an animal. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I tell you, the best way to, like, uh, the best way to win that argument is just to tell a vegan the truth that there's more animal death in a grain of in a pound of grain than there is in a pound of beef. Those combine those combines, they kill everything. And then all the pesticides. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's way more death than a pound of a pound of grain. But they they don't like to hear that, even though it's the truth. <laughs> well shit man we're only we're only 49 minutes in and it's already getting weird <laughs> all 
All right, so tell us what gym you train at. Pimp out your gym. Tell everybody where uh, you train. Summit Training Center in uh, Bettendorf, Iowa. It's a uh, it's pretty cool place. Again, I feel like I just got lucky and ended up in the right place with the right people. But um, Latich used to have a gym out here, and when he his gym closed, we got a lot of his guys that came over to Summit and. So I pretty much only train with men and a lot of them are beasts. So, you know, I'm getting my ass kicked on the daily, um, but I learn so much from these guys. It's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm super happy and proud that you got a good team. So how many coaches do you have? Two. Two coaches and uh, their specialties are like a striking and a ground guy. So, um, they're kind of split. My one does all of my conditioning. He does stand up with me and then he's more jujitsu. And then my other coach does stand up and more wrestling. Awesome. You spend a lot of time uh, with the wrestling. That's like the most amazing base you could possibly have in my opinion. in MMA. Yeah, it's a huge advantage. And, um, naturally like, uh, naturally I think I'm, better at the wrestling aspect than the jujitsu aspect but i mean wrestling is good to set up that jujitsu man wrestling is just great pretty much yeah. there's so many there's so many world-class wrestlers that never throw a punch and then go right into mma and destroy because they can control their fighters um in the cage like where do you feel the most comfortable like the clinch up against the cage dirty boxing taking the center throwing hands or do you feel the most comfortable on the ground I, yeah, I'm definitely most comfortable on the ground, but we've been working stand up so much to get me comfortable that it's coming along and I'm feeling a lot better there. Um, been a lot on dirty boxing and getting comfortable being up close. And um, I do a decent amount of clinch work. Um, I gotta say the ground's kind of my home, though. That's where I started. Which that, that blows me away. Like you won on your feet, both fights. Like that's awesome. That, that's, <laughs> no, awesome that you, that's awesome that you feel more comfortable on the ground because you seem like you seem like you've done the most damage with your hands. Like, go yeah. look up Lindsey Spencer, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting new people that are popping in, and that way they can have some context. But uh, yeah, so. Time wise, like, um, how long when you're drilling, when you're drilling, are y'all doing three minute, five minute drills, or you're just drilling one thing, talking about it, drilling one thing, talking about it. How do you do it? Do you, when you're, when you're grappling, when you're doing grappling runs or striking runs or jujitsu stuff, do you guys run for three minutes, then talk five minutes, then talk? Um, yeah, typically at the beginning of the class is we do the technique and drilling and stuff. And then at the end of class, it's all live rounds, typically three minute rounds. Sometimes we'll bump it up to four and five minutes. Uh, three is like the regular. And, um, so we get a lot of good conditioning in just because we're doing so many live rounds. So could you see yourself making it five rounds if, if you were ever asked to do a do a five round fight or is your conditioning and cardio good enough? Or is that something that you're having to focus on? Yeah. Um, I can. Yeah. It's just, it depends on where we're at in, in the training and the cycle and stuff like, so three minutes is kind of the basis. And then we're at what we need to be doing. We'll bump up the time and stuff. So yeah, I, I can do a five minute round or a few five minute rounds. Um, we've done, I'm trying to think lately, um, the five minute rounds that we've been doing are more conditioning stuff. So I haven't done a five minute grappling round in a while, but I know it's there at all my other cardio stuff. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, does cage aggression is five minute rounds? Yeah. For amateur, it's three minute rounds. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, how many fighters are your coaches having to deal with? Is their focus on you, or do they have multiple fighters that are active that they're having to work with? 
Um, sometimes they've got a few others that it's kind of a back and forth sprint for them. Um, thankfully, this last fight, one of my coaches had to corner a few other people, and then my one coach uh, was just with me. And so that helped a lot that I at least had someone there with me the whole time, make sure I got warmed up at the right time and everything. Oh, shit. Are you telling me there could have been a chance where you didn't have a corner man? That would have sucked. No, they definitely would have been there to corner me. I'm just talking about like the whole process beforehand, I guess. Oh. How many uh, active fighters do you have in, in where you train at, like that the coaches have to work with? Um, I think uh, like four or five, I want to say, recently. But we, we've got a much bigger group that we actually train with, but those are the like cage aggression guys. Right on, right on. Does, uh, does your... Does your camp, do they ever plan on trying to bring in some females for you to train with? Like there's no local females for you to, to spar with? Um, yeah, that's a, a discussion that we're trying to work on. Like I said, it's it's hard to people. There are some in the area. Um, but yeah, to, yeah, we're trying to figure out how to work all that out. Because the fighters that are out there are cage aggression fighters. Is that the issue? Yeah, like, um, it's like they're either all cage aggression. There are a couple different gyms in the area, but there's like, I can only think of like three, four women that I know of, which, I mean, that doesn't say anything, but that actually like would be interested and train it. Um, and those, like, I don't know which ones are going to fight again out of any of them. So, it, it, yeah, it's just like a really select, narrowed pool. No, it's likely going to have to travel a little bit. I didn't even think of that. Anybody that you could potentially be sparring with is going to learn what you do, and then you might wind up having to fight them. Yeah, that, right. That would definitely so, complicate things. You definitely don't want the person your fighter already comfortable with you in the cage. Right. So I did actually the my first fight, Liz. Um, I have trained with her before, and I would love to do that again. She's awesome. But um, that's I'm at least having to travel. Or she traveled like two hours or something to come down to train. So I'd have to go outside of town a little bit, at least. So. Uh, you do pretty well for yourself. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be too much of a thing to to train some or to drive somewhere or potentially fly somewhere to work with somebody. Or is that something that would? I mean, obviously with your coaches, obviously with your coaches. But is that something yeah. that you could potentially do? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that would be an issue at all. It would be a lot of fun, and I need. I need to work with women more. I love training with men. Actually, I think it's a lot of fun and I, I love my guys, but um, I definitely need to find some people to train with. So that that's uh, going to happen at some point for sure. There's a lot of female MMA fighters in Texas. I, I don't know oh, yeah? yeah. 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 There's, there's a lot of them like the little local shows and stuff like that. There's two, sometimes two, three female fights. So there's, they're here. They're here, and if you ever come to Texas, we can um, take you through a pistol and rifle class while you're here. You need to get you. Your, fun. You need to get an AR-15. They're fun. Way easier to shoot than a pistol. <laughs> too. Way easier to shoot than a pistol. Like super, super easy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much fun. that's pretty much that's pretty much what I do these days. Like I used to be like you in sports, very very competitive and eventually just decided work was more important than being beat up or sore all the time. But I just got into firearms and started shooting and that's, that's my passion. And I got pretty decent at it to where now I teach a class. I teach a, well, I mean, it's not like an everyday class. It's one of those things where you get 10 people that are ready to go and then you do the class. But, uh, oh. I got to a point where I'm teaching pistol and rifle. Um, I even got an invite to Tehran tactical in california to go shoot there however i'm not doing it 
I love Terran Butler, but I'm not going to going to California. And the invite wasn't necessarily from um, from Terran Butler, but somebody that shoots there, a friend of mine. You know what Terran Tactical is, yeah? Don't. Put my hands on my hips. <laughs> You've seen the movie John Wick? Yeah. You've seen John Wick? That's where Keanu Reeves yeah. trained to become the animal that he is with a gun. Like Keanu Reeves is that Oh, badass. shit. Right? Yeah, he's, he's that badass in real life. You should go check out the Keanu Reeves videos. Yeah. Have you seen the video of him on the range? You, uh, no, but I heard he does competitions and stuff, right? I don't know that he does competitions, but I know that he wouldn't do bad as a competition shooter. The videos that I've seen mm -hmm. of him at uh, Terran Tactical, um, he's better than I am, and he's an actor. I was just about to say just an actor. That, awesome. dude's, that dude's not just an actor. He's a... Uh, yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah, Keanu. I'm I'm a I'm a super Keanu Reeves fanboy. Like, I've always been a Keanu yeah, Reeves fan, same. but when I realized that he was, uh, that that all wasn't Hollywood, and that he is that badass, I was like, I need to step my game up. I consider myself a shooter, and an actor is kicking my ass super fast. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you haven't seen yeah. that video. There's a couple of them actually. As soon as we get off this, I'll podcast, have to look them up. Yeah, as soon as we get off this podcast, we're gonna I'm gonna stream it in the Discord and we'll watch it together just so you can see it. It's a really short clip. Super, super right. badass. Cool. So you married, boyfriend? Uh, engaged. Engaged. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. How Thank does you. he feel about you fighting? Uh, he loves it. He thinks it's really cool. Um, he was very, very nervous for my first fight, but uh, he did a lot better for the second one. Is he in? Is he? But a fighter? He actually really likes it. Is he a fighter? Or? Yeah, he's not a fighter, but uh, he comes to training with me, so he's learning stuff too. He really likes it. Could you see him in the cage one day? I think it's gonna maybe. I think yeah. He's super competitive, and yeah, he was like, maybe in a few years when I learn more and, and stuff like that, I could see it, for sure. What do you, what's his weight class? He's very competitive. Uh, he's about, he walks around about 205. He'd probably be like a 170-ish, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm definitely wanting yeah. to see that fight, too. I like fights. I want to see everybody <laughs> fight. I'm that guy standing outside yeah. with his phone screaming "World Star." Not really, but yeah, that's I'm I'm into fighting enough to where, if a fight breaks out, I'm like, "Why take the kids to the car?" And I'm gonna stand there and watch the whole fight. I can't help myself. <laughs> I think I think there's something broken yeah. into my brain to where fighting just is super super exciting. So let's let's make this a little bit more awkward than it already has been a couple of times because I keep I can't think of anything to ask you. You you and your you and your boyfriend who's better on the ground? <laughs> um I tend to submit him more often. Um but he's very very strong. So like if he catches me and if he's going 100% it's really really hard. Like sometimes I can't grip or you know if he just <laughs> He's in side control. It's really, really hard to get up from the ground. So um, I think I do have more submissions on him, but uh, he's being nice in that he's not using 100% strength. He's trying to use technique. So I think it's better. Well, he's 200 but, pounds. So, I mean, that's a, that would be, I mean, he's just strong. It'd be trouble for anybody, anybody, anybody our size. I'm, I walk around at around 180, 185. I couldn't, I don't know what I would do with a 200 pound person. Like I, I got friends that are that big that I've sparred with and just messed around with after having some drinks, roll out the mats and play with them. They they don't know anything about wrestling or jujitsu or fighting. And they're, 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 they're tough to deal with just because of how fucking strong they are. Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your yeah. fiance's, uh, first name? Ray? Randy. Randy, I had to read your lips because your mic didn't come through. Randy, I'm not trying to start shit. 
I just had to ask a interesting question. <laughs> so, uh, is, is he is he home tonight with you? He is. He's out watching football. I think. You took away. You took. A, I'm taking away from your your honey time. I really appreciate you coming oh, on. This is really cool. Just so you oh, guys know. Oh, absolutely. I, I, messaged, I messaged like 20, 20 people. Not all fighters. I want to say I probably messaged like 10 fighters. I was watching fights all night and was like, you know what, let's have a fighter on Sheepdog TV because I haven't done this yet. And after, out of everybody that I messaged, I only got two replies and Lindsay is the, is the, is the one that actually committed and was cool enough to burn two hours of her life away talking to a random stranger person but I, I really do appreciate it i really do appreciate it it's so, been fun um i appreciated that you took any interest you know i don't you i'm just get, a little you, nobody you, 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 right now uh, you're not you're not a nobody <laughs> anybody that can go into a cage like that it, it it's, it takes a special kind of person to walk into a cage and go to war with somebody that's going to tear their head off. You're not a nobody. That's, yeah. I mean, in my eyes, you're a warrior. Anybody that gets in a cage like that. And, and what's the money like? What would you, what was the money like for your first fight? Um, it's, I mean, it's amateur. So it's just based off of, uh, ticket sales. We get a commission off of ticket sales for amateur. So, I mean, is I got a nice little bonus, both fights. I'm not going to complain about it. Won't say a number, though, will you? You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm just generally curious what um, amateur fighters, well, I wouldn't call you amateur. You look like a pro to me, but I'm just generally curious what entry-level fighters are making these days compared to back when I was scuffling around with... Uh, with my jujitsu buddies. I think that first fight, it was shy of 400, something like that. It's way more impressive than back in the day. And your second fight? Second fight was a lot higher for a few reasons, um, but that was closer to just about a thousand. She um, made a thousand some- dollars in 15 seconds, guys. We need, to, we need to rethink our lives, folks. Time to get in the gym. Um, I'm 37. Am I too old? Hell no, yeah. let's do it. Hell yeah, I'm too old. I got too many injuries. I got torn bicep tendons and torn rotator cups and three herniated discs. I I didn't really treat my body very well. I was I've you had that adrenaline rush that you had. I was always chasing that adrenaline rush, doing crazy shit like jumping dirt bikes, mm. climbing in rings and sparring with people I had no business sparring with, um, fighting people in their backyard. Not not like assault and battery, like it was a setup fight. <laughs> I just got to explain that. On, on Twitch, I, I think I can talk about committing a crime, but I just can't commit a crime. But I went committing a crime. It was just a fight. Anyways, what she what she yeah, did, definitely what she did should have been a crime. That straight right, <laughs> you should have been handcuffed after that. That was that was uh, you giggle and you're being all humble. But did you watch the video? Yeah, you know what I'm I've talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That was nasty. Yeah, very nasty. It was pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely not an adrenaline junkie. I've never really understood that. I have gone skydiving a couple of times, but it was more like this is something I'm scared of doing. I need to need to overcome it. Would so you, it's, it's fighting. It I've done it twice, and absolutely, I would do it again. It's amazing. No, it is. Uh, I, I've uh, skydived twice as well. I was, I was hoping to do a third one. So that I can jump by myself, but uh, it's too expensive. Too expensive. Yeah. Those tandem jumps. Uh, yeah. And after you do it once, you can't just go and do it once. Did you do it two times in one day, or did it once and then went back and did it again? It was a uh, a year apart. I I spent some of my rent money on my second jump the day I jumped. 
Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was quite addicting. There's lots of drugs out there in the world, but there's nothing like jumping out of a plane. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. That, I need compared, to do that. that compared to being in a cage, was the adrenaline level similar at any point or was the cage worse? Uh, the cage was worse. Like, like I said, I've never had an adrenaline dump like that, like where it was painful, like my whole body was on fire. Jumping out of a plane is like scary, but euphoric at the same time. A totally different feeling. Mm. So in your, in, in your, in both of your fights, did either, either the girls, uh, um, when you got hit, did, did you immediately feel like you were in trouble or did you get hit and you're like, Oh, I can do this. That wasn't shit. No disrespect to the no. other fighters. No disrespect. To yeah. The uh, no, I don't. It, uh, yeah. No disrespect to the other fighters, but it hits, uh, those ones that kind of just rolled off. You know, I never really felt like they were, um, putting me in a bad position with their strikes. So I, I can take a decent hit. That's something I know how I'm just trying to figure out how to not allow those hits to land. Yeah. I mean, that would, Unnecessarily. Be, that would be a good thing. What about sparring? <laughs> have you, have you ever had in spar? Obviously you haven't had your bell rung in the fights. I've seen both of your fights, but during sparring, have you ever got the wobble leg or got your bell rung to where you kind of feel like you've been there before? So, you know what to do next time? Um, I've, I've gotten the small concussions just to wear like, you know, you're sensitive to light or like headache for a few days. I've never, my legs have never given out. Um, they do, they have a few times when I got hit with a nasty liver shot, like three or four times. I think I've just straight dropped to my knees with liver shots, but, um, my head, um, uh, no, just like those minor, like I'll get headaches and stuff after. I guess that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I imagine it eventually it's going to happen to everybody, but the body shots are. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. So, uh, I can't wait to your next fight. Like I'm excited. Like we've seen you go through adversity on the ground and we've seen you absolutely dominate a person. Um, what, how, what's your confidence level like in your third fight going in? You think that you're going to be a lot more comfortable and loose and that adrenaline dump won't be there or are you expecting it to be there? Um, goals. I want to feel, like I said, just present and, and comfortable. Um, I, I don't know. I have a hard time saying I'm going to be super confident. I don't like to underestimate anybody or any circumstance. Um, but with the improvement in my mindset and just how I handled everything from first fight to second fight, um, I'd like to say, I'd, I would like to see that much improvement yeah, for the next be, one. It will be, there was a huge break between my first and the second one. That was two years out of the cage. I didn't know if I was going to fight again. So this will be a lot sooner to get back in there. Yeah. I think that being relaxed, see, you're, you're really jacked. So I think being relaxed is going to help you with your cardio. I think being a little bit too stiff, I could imagine would uh, would uh, be, a, be a negative way to spend your energy. Not necessarily cocky and too confident. Yeah. Like, I'm not. You don't ever have to think in your head. Well, fuck. Conor McGregor thinks it in his head all the fucking time that he's going to kill everybody right in front of him. So maybe it's not a bad thing. I think you can respect a fighter and their abilities and still have it in your head that there's no loss in your brain. Like you're winning this fight. I really don't know. I really don't know what it feels like. I've been in fights, but I'm just a guy that's been in fights. That's it's a completely different thing than being locked in a cage with a big crowd watching you and cameras over your head and stuff. It must be fun though, too. It is. It's, um, yeah, it is really fun. I, I did the first one, kind of just to see if I had what it took. Like everyone's like your first fight is when you find out whether you're a, a fight or flight person. Like if you actually have that warrior mentality to stay in it. And so I kind of just wanted to see 
because like you said, um, training and the cage are a totally different story. And I knew that. So I was like, I want to know if I have what it takes to just hold my own in a cage. And um, then kind of like you were saying, I was like, I need to, you know, focus on my job and my work and, and building my business and all that stuff. And so I didn't think I was ever going to fight again, but, uh, the second opportunity came up and I just couldn't say no to the challenge. And I, I have to say, I enjoyed the entire process a lot more this time around. It was, it was a lot of fun, very good experience. Yeah. I think, I think the going into it, like you're excited for the fight and your intent is to have fun. That'll probably knock some of the nerves off. Um, I can't remember what this fighter's name was, but um, I heard it on a podcast, the way this fighter trains is to where when he's sparring, they go through all the real motions of mm-hmm. like, when you're at the fight, he walks out with his coaches, he gets into the cage, the whole referee and everything, they announce his name and stuff, and he just practices it just like that That's all the time. Awesome. And from what I heard, the, for, and it for his instance, it helped with his nerves because it's some. He's basically getting to see exactly what's going to happen every time he's going to, a, you know, a produce fight with you know under. Yeah. Maybe try. Yeah, that. that's the ideal. Is to. That's the ideal scenario is to train as closely as you're going to be competing. We actually did that. This was probably one of the most miserable parts of the camp was that. Um, Typically I'm a morning person and I'm usually in bed by like nine 30 or 10 and I didn't fight until about nine 30. And so three weeks out, um, I had to change my entire schedule to become a night person and start training at night. And that first week was terrible. My body was not about it. And I could sleep in in the mornings cause I was used to waking up and I was making myself stay up late. So I was running low on sleep. It messed up my entire eating schedule. So I had to like, I was on a liquid diet for a while, basically making sure that I was getting enough calories to fuel my workouts. And, but it helped, man. Like that night I was ready to go. I was awake and it was like, we got to, got to change this. Cause I can't have my body shutting down by the time I'm supposed to be warming up. So anything you can do like that to mimic competition, it, it definitely helps. What about, uh, what do you do pre-fight? Do you, do you just kind of relax, lay back, nap, listen to music up until a certain point, and then you get up and you start hitting pads? Th- this is something I've always been curious about, and I've never been able to ask a fighter. How active are you, and for how long are you active in warming up, hitting pads, and all that stuff previous to the fight? Because it seems like I've seen certain fighters get in the octagon, and they're already huffing and puffing. Yeah. So my two fights were different that way. Actually. Um, the first one I spent a lot more time warming up. We have to stay in the back. And so we, we kind of just, our team picked a locker room and we're all back there BSing and hanging out. Um, my first fight, I want to say it was a longer, like 15 minute pads warm up and just like dancing around kind of sparring a little bit, no contact. And um, spent more time with it the second time. Um, even though I felt more calm, more ready to go and stuff, um, my core temp was like way, way up. So I was already sweating before I even warmed up. That was basically what they wanted. They just wanted me to get a good sweat going. And so my warm up this time was really, really brief. Just, uh, got out, hit some pads really hard, really quick. And, uh, then went down and relaxed and Waited till game time. Right on, right on. Is there is it in the works? Is it in the works or in the future that uh, the the gym? What you call your, say the gym you were training at again? Summit. Summit. Do they? Is it in the works or into the plans to eventually do a cage there? Or is it the facility uh, too small? I mean, there's there's plenty of room there, but it's primarily a wrestling gym. So, um, my assumption is that the owner will want it to stay that way. I'm not sure. It'd be awesome if you get a cage in there, like for his, for his mixed martial arts fighters. Like I would think it'd be invaluable to take it as far as having a microphone and a PA, like them walk out, go to the cage, 
you know, have the referee announcer and all that stuff just to go through that over and over and over and over. So I was a touring musician and uh, I practiced at this place. Uh, a friend of mine had this pretty big shop, big building, and he, he built a stage for this purpose to where his band would practice, my band would practice, or any bands that wanted to practice there, and we'd just invite crowds over. People. Just open open to the public, and all we're doing is practicing and working on new material, but there'd be people there watching. So walking out of stage, getting announced to the stage, like we went through those motions and practicing our set and our performance. And for me, personally, I'm not getting punched in the face, but the nervousness that I had when I go and play in front of big crowds just wasn't there because I had already done this hundreds and hundreds of times. It seems yeah. that, that that process produces just as much anxiety as probably when those cage doors close just just walking up to the stage without tripping and falling and making a fool of yourself um how do you react to the crowd when you walk out on the stage like it would be invaluable to you to be able to train in a cage especially your yeah. ground especially your ground game you know if mm -hmm. you're on the ground and you decide hey it's time to get up you got no cage to practice using to get up he maybe he didn't even need a whole cage. Maybe he just puts a uh, like three sides so that his MMA fighters can fight with their backs up against a chain link. You know what I mean? Yeah, we do have um, padded walls, so we do some cage work on the the walls. It's not quite the same, but it's we can still mimic it. But that would that would be helpful for sure. And the, the other thing about the cage is uh, the <laughs> the ground is so different. Like the, the flooring canvas it feels way different um, and it gets pretty slippery if there's like sweat and blood on there. So it'd be nice to get used to um, just the different surface too. Yeah. I never, I never fought in a cage. I fought in like a boxing style rink. It was still, it was still mixed martial arts and all that, but I never had my feet in a cage and felt what that padding feels like because a boxing ring isn't really it's not really padding i mean it's kind of padded i can't really explain it it's a definitely a harder surface than than mixed martial arts pads so that guys can get a good grip with their feet they're meant for shoes you know boxers wear shoes and shit but hey maybe bring that up maybe just having three sides you know three sides of a chain link not very tall just something for you to put your back up against I couldn't imagine a padded wall, you know, because when you get on it, when you get on a chain link, it flexes. How tight are those cages? Are they super tight or do they flex pretty good? Um, from what my coaches have said, they're all kind of a little different. And so we went out um, before the fight, before any fans were allowed in and walked around in the cage so we could get a feel for it. And that one was it. It had a decent flex. It wasn't like you were going to get swallowed up in it, but it's definitely different than the padding on the walls that we were training with. So, Have you ever um, thought about doing some training with uh, other people outside of your gym at all? Or would your coaches take it like an, with your coaches, train with people with, you know, maybe go somewhere where, nope, you couldn't do that. You go somewhere local and work in their cage with your coaches and then everybody's getting to watch what you do and how you do it man that kind of complicates everything doesn't it yeah like um it's not as big of an issue for me because like i said there's not as many women around but like the guys in the area it's like yeah you kind of have to watch what gyms a lot of us will bounce around and um train in different gyms but i have to watch uh who's who's there if it's someone that like you're gonna be fighting against that that's a, a common issue. So. But for you maybe not so much because there's not probably, not. Many, probably not that many females in your how how would your coaches feel about that? Would they be like this is in your best interest? Or would they be worried that they I couldn't imagine them being worried that they'd lose a fighter. You seem super, super loyal to them, but I think that that would oh, yeah. be very beneficial to you to get some training outside of your fights inside of a cage i couldn't imagine having to work in a cage and not getting to train in one that, that's got to be tough yeah i know they would um it it depends on who it was with like if they couldn't be there you know and they not they know i'm not going anywhere as far as training but um yeah if i had an opportunity to 
train inside of a cage, uh, they know that that would be a big deal. That'd be really helpful. Cages aren't, aren't, you know, super, super expensive and they're really, really easy to build. Really easy to build. Yep. So, I, I mean, I realize that you're at a wrestling gym, but man, it, even for all the wrestlers, man, how many of those wrestlers consider getting in the cage? Probably almost all of them. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Cause it's all like school age. It's like young kids up to college. So they're doing it in school and either too young to fight or they're on scholarship. So they probably can't. Being on a scholarship, getting injured. Yeah. God, sucks. I mean, all guys, yeah. all guys that young are full of piss and vinegar. I, if I was a wrestler practicing in a gym that also taught, taught mixed martial arts, I there's no way in hell that I wouldn't want to fight. Man, that sucks. I would love for you to have yeah. a cage, have a cage to train in. I think that that would be super beneficial. Anything that you can recreate constantly before a fight is going to get you more familiar and comfortable with it. But whatever you're doing right. is working. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what you're doing because you've got two wins. I mean, a lot of fighters don't. A lot of fighters don't win their first fight, and a lot of fighters don't win their first fight against somebody with eight fights. That's insane. I couldn't imagine being your coaches at the time saying, "Hey, we got you a fight," and they know that she has eight fights. Maybe they just did. They do a lot of studying of her and watch any videos on her, or just they knew that you were prepared for that type of fight her what she was bringing to the table yeah so we'd seen her fight before and we did some homework and stuff we knew that um i was going to come in stronger than her and yeah it was just like she has a lot more experience but we think you'll be all right so they they definitely have my back and they wouldn't have allowed me to take the fight um if they knew it was going to be a disaster so um, it was definitely a battle, but, um, what was her record? You know, we felt like, it was okay. I actually don't know. I'm not sure. And it's probably not something I can Google either. And my producer had to bounce out. If you're still here later, buddy. All right. Somebody in the chat. What was her name? Do you know? Do you remember? That'd be so savage if you didn't um, remember. Yeah, your first your first fight, what her name was. Yeah, Liz Goodwin. Liz Goodwin of Cage Aggression. Somebody try to find her uh fight record. And the second fight was uh it was uh it was her first time in the cage, yeah. Mm-hmm. You you went through the same thing, but you won. And she she seemed like a pretty big yeah. girl. Like she seemed like she could have been some trouble. Uh how, was she Yeah, she was no, go ahead, go ahead. Um, she was, I want to say she was like nine or five, nine, maybe something like that. And she weighed in at like 172. So, uh, you know, came in a bit overweight. But, uh, what, what, like I said, I'm just, what division, what, what weight class were y'all supposed to be fighting in? 155. 155, and she weighed in at 170 something? Mm hmm. And they still let her fight. Was it like your decision? Did they come to you and be like, "Hey, she's overweight. Do you still want to fight?" Yep they uh, they left it completely up to me. They were like, "Here are your options, and it's it's all up to you." And <laughs> and there was no had, uh, there was no question for you, huh? You were like, "No, I'm here. No. Let's do this." No, yeah, this was a really long camp. This fight was originally supposed to take place the end of March and got postponed due to COVID. And so it was like an eight month fight camp for me. And I was busting my ass the whole time. There was no way I was not going to let that fight happen. So leading up to your two fights, what was uh, the kind of the agenda with your coaches to get you peak, get you to peak as soon as you walk through, um, walk into the cage? Like what's the process leading up maybe two weeks out, one week out? So again, so my two fights were completely different experiences. Um, the first fight is his original opponent, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know the story, but, um, she pulled out of the fight. So I accepted on 11 days notice. Um, so it was a very, very short fight camp. 
Um, I'd been training, I'd been conditioning hard, you know, but, um, so that one was uh, a little bit of a rush. Um, it was just, uh, getting as much training in as, as possible, like specific, like very specific cage training. Um, and this one was basically, I had two peaks because like I said, uh, it was supposed to be the end of March and it got postponed nine days out. So I was like right there. I was just getting through all of the hardest workouts and, and ready to start peaking. And then they postponed it. So, um, we start out the beginning. It's, um, a little bit lighter training, much more technique fo- focused, stuff like that. And then, um, the last month, three or four weeks out, it's very, very specific. i um, working on any weaknesses that I'm showing. It's very, very cardio heavy, very intense that way. And then, um, last few days out, it's really easy. Just resting, moving, just, uh, moving enough to, uh, not, not feel stagnant, you know, work up a good sweat and then go home like that. Keep limber. So up to the week prior, like a week prior to the fight, you, the last week you, st- you stopped sparring, you stopped doing any kind of contact work and you just stay loose and, and keep your blood pumping and stuff daily. Yeah, pretty much. Right on, man. Some fighters spar up until the, you ever see the fighter that gets in the cage with a black eye? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> oh man. You should watch more fights. Um, who, who do you, who do you kind of admire, kind of look up to in the MMA world? Who's your favorite fighters? Oh man, I gotta say, I I do really like Holly Holm. I think she's a badass. Um, Doug Rose. Doug Rose, she is such a fucking sweetheart. Like I was so. Well, who was who was the the girls? I can't. Nobody can say her name. The who she took the belt from. What was her name? Oh. Come on now. See, I don't know either. No, even if we, even, even if we knew, even if we knew, we couldn't pronounce her name. Hell, Joe Rogan could barely pronounce her name. But she was kind of kind of a bully. She was always really mean to the fight other fighters she fought. Always talked a bunch of mess about them and stuff like that. And uh, during the weigh-ins, Thug, it seemed like she was praying or she was reciting something as that girl was being mean and shit. And then they finally get into the cage. And Thug Rose just dominates her. It's the first time I ever seen this 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 girl get dominated the way she did. And then at the end of the fight, she's like, "This belt don't mean nothing. Just be nice to people." And I was an instant fan because that's kind that's kind of my thing. I always talk about being nice and showing compassion and telling people you never know what people are going through. And to see a UFC fighter win the belt and then to say that this belt doesn't mean anything was. Awesome. A, a good a good woman for girls all around the world to look up to. I was really, yeah. really, really excited to see her win. What about male fighters? Who's your who's your male fighter that you like? Mm, and I don't know if I regret play. Who's yours? We'll have a bunch. I've been watching the UFC for a long time. Uh, who I was, who I'm most excited about is somebody that's not fighting right now. It's Conor McGregor. I was really excited about him. Mm-hmm. I watched him from the beginning of his career, and uh, I didn't see any of his fights before the UFC until I seen him in his first UFC fight. But after his first UFC fight, I start watching his fights with his other promotions, and I was really excited about that dude. I think he's just at that point in his life where he's got enough money to where he don't need to fight. But I really want to see him a uh, rematch with Khabib. Like I don't think Khabib fought Connor at 100%. I think there was something good. Connor didn't look like himself in that fight. Now, I'm not saying that Khabib won't beat Connor again, but I would like to see Khabib fight Connor at 100%. If I had to talk about my all-time favorite UFC fighter it's a this is so hard this is so hard um because I really have like four main dudes Conor McGregor I wouldn't say he's my all-time but he's the guy that I'm most excited about right now that's actually not doing shit but uh 
a toss up between these three would be GSP. Um, am I really having a brain fart right now? Jesus Christ. What a, what a, this is awful. I was just thinking of them. And as soon as I go to say their name, Matt Hughes, Matt Hughes and, uh, Why can't I think of this? Why is my brain not working? Here, you can help me out, probably. <laughs> he lost his belt to... Uh, can't remember that dude's name, either. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm not on my game tonight. I'm just not on my game tonight. I guess we all have these days. Who Who's the, the big Neanderthal wrestler that came to the UFC? What was his name? Can't think. I I don't like the guy. Is the reason why I can't remember his name. Um, Help me out, Lindsay. You got this. You're an MMA uh, fighter. You should know this stuff. Uh, I should know. No, this but stuff. I don't. You know, I shouldn't have smoked pot before the podcast. Is what it is. I should. I shouldn't have done that. And drinking beer. Oh, this is gonna bother me. I'm like not willing to move on until I figure it out. It's terrible. Uh, I, it's my, I'm just drawing a blank. They were both wrestlers. Um, he won. He he was a champion in his 40s. Old school fighter. Been around forever. I can't think of his goddamn name. Um. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> giving you. I'm not giving you much to go. I'm not giving you much to go on. It's not your fault. I'm just ha I'm just a moron tonight, for whatever reason. <laughs> Anyways, uh, your sparring partners, your sparring partners at your gym. You said you just spar with your coaches only, or do you spar with any of the wrestlers or any of the other fighters, or just just with your coaches only? Um, stand up stuff is mostly with my coaches, but I do have, a f um, sometimes with the guys, it just depends on what I have planned with my coaches. Sometimes I can only train with my coaches when the other guys are getting together. So stand up is mostly with them. Um, occasionally with the other guys, um, grappling stuff is with the other guys all the time. So you get to, you get to grapple and wrestle with like a handful of people, and you get to deal with a handful of different styles. That's good. That's pretty awesome. And they're all either bigger or stronger or have way more experience. And so it's uh, it's really intense and it's a lot of fun. We do get a lot of wrestlers that come around too. And um, it's, yeah, we have a really good time. So how awkward is it for the guys to spar with you? Are they comfortable with it? They just hop in and bang it out or... Or do they, do they, are they like worried about being in the cage with you? I would be worried uh, that I'm going to get knocked out by a female. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to get knocked out by Lindsay in front of all my wrestler buddies. No, I don't, they, they don't seem to mind. Um, I think I've been around long enough now that, uh, they, they know me and it, it, I don't know. I don't hear them complain about it at least. Do you go 100% oh. against them? Like when you strike, do you think? No. no. Uh, I guess I guess you don't want to. You Probably people wouldn't want to spar with you if you hit them too hard. I don't know. Watching, no, my, like watching I, my buddies spar back in the day, they went at it. It was a fight is the reason why I ask. All the sparring that I've seen, it looks like a full-fledged fight to me. They're trying to kill each other, which I never fully understand because... Uh, I think it was even Conor McGregor that said this, improve your um, software without damaging your hardware. Like, that's the way he trains. He, I don't know if he still trains like that. Um, man, how... how, is, uh, I how think, is, go ahead, keep going. I'm sorry. I was just going to say from uh, what I hear, that was kind of a, how they did train back in the day. That was like the old school mentalities, go hard 100% all the time just beat the hell out of each other and nowadays it seems like it's more uh um yeah like smarter i guess is a better way to say it or work smarter not harder maybe guess what i just remembered i was talking about randy couture what? randy couture oh 
Yeah. Man, my brain's just not working tonight very well. I don't know if it's the IPAs, the marijuana I smoked, or my nerves. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on with me. You're better at talking than I am tonight, and I'm supposed to be the guy that's doing all the talking. <clears throat> it is what it is. Just having one of those one of those nights. Definitely going to have to yeah, do some editing on this. This would be the probably the first podcast that I ever had to do any editing on. Because I keep getting weird, but uh, yeah. So in your in your training in your training, like you, uh, how much time do you dedicate? Is it a daily thing that you do this, or is it like you have a certain day where you work on cardio? I realize when you're rolling and you're grappling and you're striking, you're working on cardio. But how often do you do you do do you run? Do you run a lot? I realize, like, how much. Like, do you get up and spend a certain amount of time every day running? Um, running depends on the day. I do a lot of cardio. Like, cardio is just about every day. Um, even on the technique days, that that's a constant. Um, but it just depends on the day, whether he has me running or doing circuit training or um, on a rowing machine or all of the above, or it, it changes a lot. That's one reason I like my training so much is I'm never bored. It's always different. Mm. Mm. Where do you, uh, what, what's your, what's your five-year plan in mixed martial arts? Do you plan on sticking with cage, cage aggressions or if a bigger promotion came out and offered you a fight, you're not under contract. Right. So if a if a more bigger promotion like you know one or well hell any of them if any of them came out or bigger would you be like ready ready to go would you have to talk it over to your coaches or uh, are you kind of staying loyal to cage aggression right now? Um, honestly, I don't have a five year plan. Um, I wasn't hundred percent sure that I was going to continue with fighting. And so I've, I've decided to now. And at, at the moment, it's just like, we're, we're waiting for the right matchups. We kind of had a game plan for the next few fights and it just depends on when and where we can find the right opponents at the right time, stuff like that. So, um, I'm not exactly sure where that's going to take me. How many females uh, does Cage Aggression have? How many females fight in this promotion? Uh, it's really inconsistent. It's it's really hard to say. Um, there was another girl that was training with us at the gym. I'm I'm not sure if she's uh, done now. I haven't seen her for a while. Um, they did have a girl a while back that did a couple of fights, and then she moved into boxing. Um, so it's kind of, it's, I can't give you a solid number. Like it's, it's kind of difficult for him to get female fights. It seems like. Yeah, it really sucks. Shit. Yeah. It seems like that it's, I, it seems to me that it's way harder for females in the MMA industry to, to move forward. I think that's, 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 that's also why it's really awesome that you hooked up with a decent promotion from the kickoff from the start. And, uh. Man, that that's got to be tough. Like I couldn't imagine being a fighter and struggling to find a fight. Is it just like one division, or they have multiple divisions for the females? Do you know know that? There are multiple divisions. It's just finding women to fight. So, you know, you know, like said, your, you do realize what's in your future right now. The struggle of not being able to find a fight. You might have to go down to one thirty-five just to get a fight. That might <laughs> become a thing. That might be in your future. I think, but I don't know. I don't know. That's, uh, for you, you said that's 30 pounds. So that'd be a 30 pound cut. It would be 20. Days, 20 pounds. Like, and what would your physical ability be after doing a cut like that? Do they allow you guys to uh, rehydrate with IV? I know in the UFC they don't. They used to, used to be able to use um, IV, but some of these smaller promotions probably don't give a shit. I have no idea. I've never seen anyone do it. I don't know if it's allowed or not. Man, that'd but, be a game um, changer if you were allowed to. I feel shitty after after that. Like I think that you would destroy uh, one thirty five. I think that you would destroy one thirty fivers. 
Like, there's just no way that they could deal with you. You're too strong. You're too strong. I don't know. I don't know how strong I would feel after that. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing because you're cutting that much weight. Now, if you yeah. if they could get your if they could get your walk around weight, um, you know, down to like 140, 145, your walk around weight. If they could get that, you would definitely lose some some uh, muscle mass from walking around at that yep. weight. Then if you only had to do like a 10 to 12 pound cut, it probably wouldn't be that bad. But you definitely would probably lose some of your strength because you'd lose some of your muscle mass because you're really lean. You don't have, you're not walking around with any body fat. It looks like you're walking around at the weight that you should be already. Yeah, that's what makes it complicated is just that I, I definitely would have to lose a lot of muscle mass to get down there. So, um I'm not even sure how that training would look like just runs only not allowed to touch any weights I don't know I don't know I haven't gone into that conversation really deeply with my coaches but they think I can do it and it would be dead eventually like, they would they would want to get my walk around weight down and I can't even picture myself that small you said <laughs> it would be crazy you said you what would you say you walked around at typically Usually about 155. 155? What about going up mm -hmm. a weight class? That's the bad thing about mm -hmm. going up a weight class is once you go up, coming back down is almost impossible because of all the muscle mass yeah. that you gain. Like you're super lean where you're at, but the to gain weight, gain weight. So, hey, here's the question for you. If you were going to go up in a weight class, would you do it with dieting or would you add muscle? add muscle is it's hard to get rid of that muscle later it's just there you know yeah i probably wouldn't go up a weight class honestly <laughs> those are some big women huh <laughs> yeah I, you would probably I, be fighting, I don't want you'd, you'd probably be fighting women that are like six two and shit if you went up a weight class <laughs> yeah you wouldn't be yeah, able to reach probably them. yeah it's just a, a personal thing. I got I got pretty big when I was powerlifting, and I was strong as hell. Don't get me wrong, but I have no desire to ever weigh more than I do right now, <laughs> ever again. I felt terrible. Yeah, I feel pretty bad now. I should get back down to where I'm supposed to be. I walk around at 180. I should probably be walking around 170, but I like to eat, and I'm unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Drink and I smoke cigars and fucked my body off completely i used to be healthy i used to give a shit got married had kids and you know got a miserable fucking job and this is this is what i do for fun i talk to complete strangers yeah. about their lives so uh <laughs> at least your job at least your job is easy right you know your job outside of mma pretty simple i wouldn't say it's easy but it's a good job and i like it I got a good job, but I, I don't know if I like it all the time. It's it's one of those high pressure jobs yeah. where I work with I work with some uh, some assholes. It's tough. It's tough. Mm. Yeah, that sucks. I don't really. You have, I have a really hell, so I'm lucky that way. At least you own your own business, right? You know, you don't have yeah. a you don't have a boss. That's got to be a game changer in life. Not having a boss. Oh, it's so nice. I could never go back to working for somebody else. It's <laughs> I've seen the light. How many <laughs> can't how many, go back? How many customers do you deal with weekly, like with your business? Is it like an eight-hour gig, or is it just like you set up appointments here and there in between your training? Yeah, it's by appointment only. So I probably see um, like uh, so like a heavy period for me. If I'm not training a lot, I probably see like 24 to 30-ish people in a week. Um, and then like the last month out from my fight, I, I took it down a little bit just so that I could have more time to train, more time to recover. So it is nice being able to be in control of that. Did you have to go to school to do what you do or you just like just started your own business? <laughs> what, what's the school like? How, how long? <laughs> I mean, that does exist. There's some people that are just like, I want to rub people, pay me. And that's, that's actually a thing. 
especially in like Las Vegas, where one day you'll probably fight if you keep doing it. What would that be like? <laughs> Are you even visualizing that right now? The chance that you could fight for a huge promotion in front of tons of people on a $60 pay-per-view. Is that even like in your mind as a goal? Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, my coaches have brought up stuff like that. And so it's, it's starting to be in the conversations. Mm. So it's there. I'm more of a, like focus on what's right in front of me kind of person. And so like it's there, but it's like back burner, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I, I just, I think it's going to happen. I see it. I wish nice. that, I wish that my viewers right now could have seen the two fights that I watched you in. It would it put everything into context and make everything make so much more sense. But YouTube, Lindsay Spencer, folks, just go look at the look at the fights that are available. Is that uh is your second fight ever going to be released on YouTube? Like how long uh, that, how long does that promotion wait before they decide? Hey, we'll go ahead and upload it. It's usually like a month. I think. So how um, long, how long has it been? It's been three weeks, yeah. Four. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. When I when I had contacted you the first time, how long it had been? Uh, I think just a week after. A week. Yeah, I think. So it's been it's been three weeks. You say? Did you say three weeks? Yeah, yeah, it's been three weeks. Uh, two. I can I can pay ten dollars and get it, or I can wait, wait more, one more week. Now, when you said you do you get paid off of the pay per views, or do you get paid off when you say pay per views, like people going and downloading it, or just the initial pay per views that night? Um, I think just the initial pay per view purchases. So the online purchases aren't something that, like if a bunch of people bought the the pay-per-view tonight or bought the or bought the ten dollar video that that like you don't see any of that cash that's that's all for the promotion i believe so boy wouldn't yeah. that be something a few yeah months, a few months after your fight they send you a check because a bunch of people <laughs> downloaded yeah. it to watch your fight yeah that'd be cool so uh Man, I think we pretty much covered everything that we could possibly cover. I've been trying to think of more interesting things to say to you, but or ask you, but we pretty much covered everything. Uh, I guess the last question I would answer or ask you is uh, how how hungry are you for this next fight? Is it something that like you're you're beating down the door and you're asking your coaches every day, or is it just one of those things where you already know that it's not in your control? Like are you, are your are your coaches reaching out to even other promotions even are they trying to find something anywhere even out of state? Um, I I'm not sure actually what they're doing. I just know they're gonna take care of me, and uh, when the right fight opportunity is here, then we're gonna go for it. So until then, I just I sit back and I train and I do what I can. Go from yeah. there. I'm just being a selfish prick, and I can't wait to see you fight again. <laughs> I wish your I wish your coaches were here right now, so I could be like, do another promotion. Drive <laughs> drive five state. Come to Texas. There's promotions here. Do something. I want yeah, to see you fight it, again. Yeah. If if the right fight is another promotion, we don't have anything against that. So that's awesome. I can't wait to see it. Hopefully, it's a promotion as good as the promotion you're in, or better. There's so many out there today. I'm kind of yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hoping. I'm kind of hoping by your by your fifth fight to see you in a much bigger promotion, and that you stomp whoever you fight, and then I bring you back and we do this again. That'll be fun. Be super fun. Hopefully, I won't be as weird and awkward and screw everything up like I did tonight. It took us four <laughs> tries just to get the YouTube recording going. Jesus. If the podcast would have, if the if the podcast would have, uh, if I would have recorded our first conversation, it would have been better than the conversation we're having right now. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me tonight. Anyways, do you have do you have any public pages? Like, are you on are you on Instagram, Twitter, any of that stuff? Uh, 
I am on Facebook. Instagram is more of my business page, but I do have a little bit of fight stuff on there. Um, Facebook's probably the more interesting one for random, that's not your, business. Stuff. That's your that's your personal page, though. I'm trying to give you get you to get a shout out to your Instagram or Twitter, but I mean it's your Facebook page. Do whatever you want to. Just say it. Uh, I don't know people. Yeah, Instagram. That's fine. And it's just my Lin- business page. Just Lindsay Spencer at Lindsay J L M T. Say it one more time. Lindsay J L M T. Lindsay J L M T on Instagram. And if you want to follow her page on Facebook, it's just Lindsay Spencer. It's probably going to be a little bit harder to find personal pages. People out of state. Facebook is they're Nazis like that. Do you know this person? You know when you send somebody a friend's request? Anyways. Well, I really, really appreciate you coming on, and uh, I hope to do this again. Definitely, um, I'll be interested in doing this again. Hopefully, you will be too after your next fight or your, or maybe wait a few fights. I, th- I think that uh, I think your next fight's going to go well. The longer you spend, Thank you. The, longer, the longer it takes for the fight to come, the more training you're going to get in. So... I might be in a hurry because right. I just want to see you fight again, but I don't necessarily think that you need to be in a hurry. I'm just, I'm a fan and I can't wait to see you bang up another bitch. <laughs> I'm such an asshole. Dang. I just want to yeah. see another person get in front of you and uh, you strangle the shit out of them or knock them out. But uh, I really appreciate <laughs> it. I really appreciate it. And uh, you have a good night. Tell the old man I said hi. And tell the coaches I said to get okay. you a fucking cage to train in. Okay. Like you tell them, you tell them, she, you tell them sheep, tell them sheepdog TV said, "Why in the fuck don't we have a cage?" <laughs> well, if it was up to them, we would. We would have long time ago. So, who's it up to? Uh, thank you, class. <laughs> um, the owner of the building. <sighs> It is, what, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right. Well, you have a good night, Lindsay. And uh, Thank you. I'll talk to you later. We'll do this again. And uh, all you folks listening, I'll keep you guys up to date on her next fight. Um, I love you guys. Be nice. Be kind to people. One act of kindness. One act of love. Don't tell me how to freedom. And I won't tell you how to freedom. <laughs>